of the temple when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and paused over the threshold of the temple, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of wings of cherubim were heard, even in the outer court, like the voice of Almighty God when he speaks. Then it happened when he commanded the man clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from among the wheels from among the cherubim, that he went in and stood behind, beside the wheels. And the cherub stretched out his hand from among the cherubim to the fire that was among the cherubim, and took some of it and put it in the hands of the man clothed with linen, who took it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of a man's hand under their wing. And when I looked, there were four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, another wheel by another cherub. The wheels appeared to have the color of barrel stone. As for their appearance, all four looked alike, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went toward any of their four directions. They, they did not turn aside, but when they went, they followed in the direction their head was facing. They did not turn aside as they went, and their whole body with their back, their hands, their wings, and the, four, and the wheels that the four had were full of eyes all around. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing, wheel. Makes sense. Each one had four faces. The, fa the first face was the face of a cherub. Now that's interesting. Before he said face of a man. But here he says the face of a cherub. The second was the face of a man. Do we know that? I always think, well, he must really like Chico. You know, <laughs> um, but to make something like that would have to be, it, it, would, it would be molded and assembled from parts. Um, and each of these knobs, it had knobs on it flowers and bowls that were shaped like almond blossoms, and, and, and these were all rich in symbolism. And of course, we'll discuss exactly what each of them, a little teaser there, and we'll discuss what each of them represents in later studies. Now, across from the lampstand, there in the holy place, on our right-hand side, as we face the Holy of Holies, stands the table of showbread, and we read about that in Exodus 25, beginning in verse 23. God says, you shall also make a table of acacia wood, Two cubits shall be its length, a cubit its width, and a cubit and a half its height. So we looked at a couple of things. One is that um, these cherubim were real, not symbolic. They were they were actual real um, individuals, and then that they were living creatures. They were real creatures. They were living creatures. And then thirdly, or I'm sorry, what was the, what was the second thing? Oh, yeah, that they weren't. Cute little Dan Cupid looking baby looking pudgy face, curly haired things. The third thing is that they were living creatures. And Ezekiel said that they had the hands of a man under their wings. And the, the fact that they have parts of other animal forms, like the face of a lion or the, the face of an eagle wings and so on, would lend itself actually to a, a still another in depth study. I mean, just even this reading Ezekiel's accounts of those visions that he had, I mean you spend a lot of time just, just going over that. Um, but we will just, of course, scratch the surfing, surfing, surface. Got my nose fixed, now my mouth doesn't work. <laughs> just scratch the surface regarding these angelic beings. For example, there, there are four faces on these creatures. There are four Gospels written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the interesting thing about that is that each of these gospel writers uh, came from a different background. They, they saw Jesus, as, and, and their gospels, that's what is good news, it's all about Jesus. And they each saw him from a different perspective. So for example, um, Matthew's background was political. So um, Matthew saw Jesus from the royal perspective. He saw him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Um, some people see this gospel in the cherub's face of a lion, king of the jungle, you know, lion, royalty, the lion of Judah. So it's totally appropriate. And then uh, Mark uh, presented Jesus as a servant and uh, suffering even to the point of death for us. And so some people see Mark in the face of the ox. An ox was a beast of burden, but it was also often sacrificed. 
take an ox and split it in two, and, you know, uh, it was an Abraham that walked between it. <laughs> and so, uh, often offered up sacrifice, and, and so some people see the mark in the face of the ox. Luke was a physician, so he saw the humanity of Christ. He saw that he was man's perfect God and God's perfect man. He saw him as the son of man. He referred to Jesus as the son of man, as the sinless one, the perfect and righteous one. And so it could be that, that Luke's gospel uh, was seen in the face of the man, right? And John, of course, he saw him from a spiritual side. John was the one who was um, uh, always referring to Jesus as, um, you know, the the uh, spirit, the spiritual aspects of, of Christ. And he, you know, may have been seen. His gospel may have been seen in the face of the eagle, because the eagle is sometimes representative of the spirit. And so, the fourth thing that we see about cherubim, or can learn from cherubim, is uh, their position in the tabernacle is above the throne because we'll see later on that the the lid of the of the mercy seat was was beaten out of one solid piece of gold and part of its or, ornation was these two cherubim that were part of it and kind of came together bent over the thing like almost like a handle or a lid uh, lid handle or grip to to raise the thing off of the of the ark of the covenant and that sort of thing. And so we see him before the throne and in the very presence of God, above the throne and in God's presence. And before that, we see him at the east entrance of the Garden of Eden, where their purpose was. We're told to guard or to keep the way of the tree of life. And so it seems that the cherubim are always in the presence of God. And as Ezekiel's vision begins, he mentions that. He says, And I looked there in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim. There appeared something like a sapphire stone, having the appearance and likeness of a throne. So it would appear that Ezekiel 